for participating in Webster University's online EDD info session today. It is June 18, Saturday, 10 a.m. Central Time. And so today we're really happy to have Eskaya. She's our graduate admissions counselor. Eskaya, can you say hi? Hello, everyone. Again, my name is Eskaya. I've probably spoken with a lot of you and sent you some program information. So I'm just here to assist if you have any questions with the admissions process, and I'll be your point of contact as well in completing the application. Thank you so much, Eskaya. And we have Tegan Shin, who's our international coordinator. Tegan, can you say hi? Hi, everyone. My name is Tegan, and I am the international coordinator. So I work with all of our international graduate students that are interested. So if you have any questions about the application process, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Wonderful. Thank you, Tegan. So we'll have a Q&A session towards the end of the presentation. So you do have sufficient time to ask questions. And then the third presenter will be me, Dr. Lee Johnson. I'm the director of EDD at Webster University. It's a pleasure to meet you all. We also have two guest speakers. So at a later slide, I will introduce our guest speakers to all of you. So um, the agenda for today's info session, we will have three main agenda items. The first one is to walk you through the ethos of the EDD, especially what is the vision and mission of the program, and so that you can determine whether this is the right program for you. So um, we also briefly talked about the differences between online um, and live virtual modalities, which we're offering two modalities for the transformative learning in the global community emphasis. So we'll walk through the difference between the two later in the slides. And then um, the most important thing for the presentation is to give you a walkthrough of what are the distinctive features of the program, you know, um, and so those are today's presentation. So the first section is what is the ethos of the ADD and why are we designing this program and, um, you know, what is this program all about? So as you see, the vision and mission statement, our program is vibrant, is student-centered and rigorous. So we also have a global citizenship perspective. As you all know, Webster University is unique because of its emphasis on global citizenship and academic excellence. So as a world-class institution, we actually have campuses all over the world. So for example, one of our doctoral students and myself and also, also Dr. Basia Rodney, we just presented at our um, Geneva campus this, this summer. So they have a creativity week conference. And so we actually have a lot of um, connections with our worldwide locations. And then um, that is one of the unique um, areas that Webster University is very proud of. So our vision of the program is to transform the status quo of inequities in the educational systems of the world. So if you see that long statement, you are probably wondering and reading the, the, the words and thinking, what does it mean? So later on, when our guest speakers talked about their dissertation topics, then you would you know, have some examples about how to apply our vision and mission in real life educational settings. So our mission is to prepare uh, scholar practitioners who have the passion and competence to make a difference in the world through scholarship and service. So um, as you see, our program has a social justice orientation that we want to make sure that our doctoral students have not just theoretical research knowledge, but they can also apply the scholarship in real life settings so that we transform the world. And that is the vision and also the mission and how they go hand in hand in our program. So these are some of the really proud recent achievements of the program. And I think it's important for all prospective students to take a look because you will know what kind of exciting scholarly work that we're producing and then how do we really transform the world right through scholarship and service. And so, for example, um, myself, we and also 11 doctoral students from the transformative emphasis area, we just co-authored and published an article called Adapting an Ethnographic Research to an Online Survey Amid COVID-19, Transformative Lens in Educational Research. And so if you would like to read about it or have the link, you know, send me an email, I'll be happy to share information about that article. And then um, besides that, I know I'm very proud to announce that our doctoral students have been publishing and then presenting. And so like 
Jenny Ono. She's one of our guest speakers today. She's a current doctoral student. She's, she was invited to write a book chapter in the first, um, in a book. And then for myself, I also um, I have been doing a lot of research and publishing as well. For example, I'm a co-editor, one of the co-editors of a book that is going to be published by Rutledge. So this is about application of Reggio Emilia approach in, um, in, in USA and having conversations with the Italian educators. And then um, we will all within the, the cohort of the transformative emphasis, continue to have that peer support in writing, you know, publishing and presenting in conferences. So that is, you can see some of the examples of our work. So we also publish a, a newsletter that is online. So as you see at the bottom of this page, there is a, there's a link. If you click that link, it gets you to the spring version of our newsletter. You can also go back to our previously published newsletter and see some of the fantastic um, research output of our doctoral students. So the ethos and the mission. So um, for myself, since I'm the director of the program, um, so I would like to talk briefly about my personal life. So I'm a first generation immigrant in the United States. So I was born in China, raised in Hong Kong, and I did my doctoral degree PhD in the Ohio State University as, a, as an international student. And so because I have, um, you know, have gone through the uprooting, transplanting experiences as an immigrant, I do have a passion, especially for serving the minoritized populations through research, teaching, advising, and service. So if you have a chance, you can look up ResearchGate for some of my publications. And then most of them are devoted to helping um, us to hear and advocate for the voices of my, my minoritized populations. And so that is my personal ethos. And so I have a mission that connects with that, which is to become a voice and advocate for transforming to the status quo for minoritized populations. So as you see, my ethos and mission is closely aligned with the program, um, the program vision and mission as well. So that is that. And so since we talked about the ethos and mission and how they go hand in hand, I think um, one of the most important feature of our EDD is that we have a flagship emphasis called transformative learning in the global community. So as you look at this phrase, some of you might not be familiar with the definition of transformative learning, and then you'll be having questions uh, in your mind about what is this flagship all about? So, <clears throat> so in this presentation, I will walk you through what is transformative learning, who is a transformative educator with the help of our guest speakers. So our guest speakers today, we have Jenny Ono, who is a second year doctoral student and a fourth grade teacher in Kirkwood, and also Trisette Dixon. She's a second year doctoral student and director of School of Communications Internship Program. So Jenny and Trisette, would you like to start introducing yourself a little bit and telling us more about what is your personal definition of transformative learning? Who is a transformative educator? Sure, Trisette, do you want me to go first or would you like to go first this time? I can go first if you like. Sounds great. So okay. I'm Jenny Ono. Um, my definition of transformative learner um, would be anybody. Um, my true belief of transformative learning and teaching is that as long as you are trying to impact change, then you can be a transformative learner. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 I don't think that it's, that it's tricky or hard. I think it's just passion that makes people transformative learners. Wonderful, Jenny. And that correlates to our program vision and mission. When we talked about transformative learning, which we are talking about personal transformations, but also across human beings. So as our doctoral students, you know, they personally go through some interesting and exciting transformation lands like how do they see the world how do they see knowledge and how knowledge is being constructed asking critical questions about um you know what is the status quo in education what are the crises and opportunities how can we chime in and change the world as they ask questions you know that's part of the transformation process as well thank you jenny and just would you like to add something about the definition 
Yes, yeah, so as Dr. Lee stated, I am a second year doctoral student in the EDD program, and my actual emphasis is transformative learning in the global community. And I have over 25 years of experience in higher education and career development, and that's what led me to this program. So when I think about transformative learning as a career delta, my current role is the director of the internship program here at Webster University. And as a career development professional, I embrace the foundational idea of transformative learning. And as basically the title, lifelong learners, being able to adjust their thinking based upon added information and new experiences. So every day as the director of the internship program, I witness this transformation. And this is through the experiences of my students making the transition from the academic world to the world of work. Now, in my role, I can see that students begin their journey as an intern with the knowledge they have gained as a student. And they apply the skills they've learned in a professional setting contributing to client projects and being mentored by leaders in their academic field. So no longer are they reading about it, they're doing it through the experiences they build. And with that, they're building confidence, they're imagining their future, they're preparing themselves to contribute to the workplace and to the world. Now, this new experience not only can change their lives, but can change generations because of that generational impact they would have when it positions them as a professional and as a global citizen. Wonderful. Thank you, Trisa. Thank you, Jenny. So the, the two of them just recorded a lightning talk to, to discuss what transformative learning is. And they also talked about in their mind who is a good example of a transformative educator. Jenny, would you like to go first? Sure. I'd, I think for me, um, I've been teaching for 32 years. And so I've taught at all levels, um, you know, kindergarten all the way through adults. And I think that as long as you're asking questions, then you are a transformative educator. My, my students educate me as their teacher by asking questions and pushing back. I say so many times in the class that it's like a broken record. Whose story are we hearing? Who are we listening to? Who is telling us this, this information? And who is not represented in the information? So it is a broken record. They, they will push back on me. I will say something and they'll say, Ms. Ono, whose story are you telling? And, and they check me all the time. We check each other. So um, again, in, in, similarly, as, as, as um, Trisette has said, and Dr. Lee Johnson, not only is it transformative learning and teaching, it, it again is anybody, anybody that is challenging the status quo, challenging what is just um, supposed to be believed and asking those questions. That's what I think. <laughs> Fantastic. So when your students ask you back that question that you want them to think about, they, they become critical thinkers in the class. Yes. And that yes. is what the transformative experience is, right? Life impacts yes. life. Fantastic. And Trisette, would you like to share with us? Sure. So even though I have years of experience in career development, my vision of a transformative educator really dates back more personally to my high school days. So when I think of a transformative educator, I admire the passion of Betty Wheeler. She was my high school principal and founder of Metro High School. So some of you might have heard this name recently because as US News and World Reports, um, I reported on their top 25 high schools in the nation. Metro High School was in that top five. So um, it, it's a college prep magnet school in the St. Louis public school system. And Betty was a leading African-American educator in the St. Louis public system before leading Metro. Um, Metro embodied racial equity by enrolling diverse, intellectually inquisitive students from St. Louis City and St. Louis County so that they could learn and grow together. 
So when I attended, they called it the school without walls mm -hmm. because our learning happened everywhere. So it was Betty's dream to create an educational environment that went beyond the classroom and embraced the city and its rich culture and all the learning experiences it had to offer. So through her example, I was able to understand what a transformative educator truly is. And I think that through this program, it helped me look back on that experience. So it's someone who has a vision, a passion for learning and the learners and someone who embraces the unknown and makes it a new reality. Well said, Chisette. Thank you so much, Jenny and Chisette. So um, next is like Jenny and Chisette talked about how do we define what transformative learning is and who is the transformative educator? Then we would like to give you more examples of you know what are our dissertations you know and how do they look like so these are some of the newer um, dissertation topics being proposed by the current cohort so you can see the topics and then see whether that connects with what you are interested in as well so like the first one um since we have tegan tegan do you mind reading the first um topic for us yeah so the first topic is leading through trauma and exploration of social emotional leadership practices that optimize scholastic excellence in urban elementary schools. Yes, yeah, and to see this topic, you know, talk, talking about trauma, trauma informed pedagogy, trauma informed leadership, you know, and then it's also situated within um, urban school settings. So uh, you can see like how our programs ethos and the mission of, and, and uh, mission and vision kind of connected towards changing and transforming what, what we see now with the status quo, right? And so that's a good example. And then the next one, it's about qualitative case study of silenced women teachers who found voice and empowerment within community. So that's advocating for women teachers. And then the next one, checking blackness at the C-suite door, a phenomenological look at experiences of black chief diversity officers at predominantly white institutions. So you can see how this one is also talking about racial equity, right? Racial justices and how the, the, the lived experiences of these diversity officers are in these um, institutions. And then we also have exploring cultural, cultural responsiveness of counter narratives in education, radical transformation of the power language dynamic in the K-5 classroom. So I know that some of these it might be connecting with you and then when you hear them, you, know, you might think, oh, that really resonates with what I am interested in. So if you have a topic that you see on screen and you're like, Dr. Lee Johnson, I really wanna connect with these doctoral students, let me know. I would definitely want to help you make that connections and you guys can form your peer support group in terms of getting literature review, you know, scholarly uh, resources and then reading and writing together. So we want to make that connection happen in the doctoral program. So since Chazette and Jenny are here, Chazette and Jenny, would you be so kind to share with us about your dissertation topic? Sure. So my dissertation topic title, it's still a working title, we're still working on it, but it's called A Fork in the Road to Graduation, a case study of undergraduate African-American students' experience and their decision to participate in academic internships. So in my research, I'm focusing on what factors influence African-American students at predominantly white institutions to participate or not to participate in internships, leading with the statistics that only 4% of African-American students participate in high impact experiences like internships. Mm -hmm. And although these are seen as transformative uh, experiences, there are fewer African-American students per uh, participating in this activity. So I have, definitely been empowered through the program and through the cohort, um, like Dr. Lee Johnson has said, sharing ideas, sharing resources, but also just lifting one another up um, in the vision of the program and just learning so much, being in this role, being able to study and practice and put in practice immediately the things that I'm learning has just been transformative. Fantastic. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Jenny, and thank you so much, Chazette. Um, that's tremendous help that you guys come and share your dissertation topics and how you define transformative learning. And then, so thank you, thank you. If you would like to stay on, you can, but if you would like to lock out at this moment, yeah, you're welcome to do so. 
So after sharing the dissertation topics, now it's time that I will walk you through the online EDD program, what are the program requirements and all of that. So um, the online EDD that we developed, it's mainly for the flagship emphasis called transformative learning in the global community. It is truly interdisciplinary, which means that within the cohorts, you would have people from you know, various educational fields. So for example, our current cohorts have someone who developed chess education um, and then chess as a minor and a major in the field. Future. And then we also have students who are interested in special education, um, particularly regarding like critical disability theories. And then we also have students in leadership. So they want to talk about trauma informed pedagogies and leadership. And then we also have students for doing internship with like exciting programs like Trisette was mentioning, and also students who have you know, interest areas in various domains. So it's truly interdisciplinary. And through this space, we have found that we learn from each other, right? So you hear a lot of different emphasis um, within this cohort. And so that they all learn together and form that learning community to support each other. And that's why it is so important. So as you see, the transformative learning emphasis is intended for scholar practitioners who aspire to become higher educational faculty members, leaders in schools, government agencies, nonprofit organizations, and various educational settings. It's designed to be a three-year program uh, with 40 credit hours. So of course, the actual duration and total number of credits depend on the completion of dissertation and scheduling with dissertation committee, but the program is designed to be three-year and with 40 credit hours. So as you see this slide, you can see uh, the course scheduling of the um, online EDD for transformative learning in the global community. So it's a three years process. The first year you would have fall one, fall two, spring one, spring two, and a summer term. So each term is eight weeks long. So you would take content area courses that talked about education, the crisis of education, the opportunities in education. So those are content area courses. And in the next slide, you will see the course names. So in case you wanna know more, you know, you can wait on and see the next slide. Year two, we're focusing on, um, you know, how to do dissertation writing because dissertation writing itself is a unique academic genre. You know, what, how, what, how many chapters, what does each chapter mean and include and how do you structuralize your dissertation and so that's the course and help you form um, cons writing consulting group and peer support group in that process so that later on when you're writing dissertation you have a support system built in and then you would take quantitative and qualitative research methods courses in year two and so year two is geared to more, towards more about the, the, the research methods courses and also how to write dissertation and then year three, you would take EDOG 8000, which is a semester long registration for dissertation writing. So at that point, you will be with your dissertation chair, and then you guys will work together um, for, for completing the dissertation requirements. So as you see this slide, you know, give you all the course titles in the transformative emphasis. So as, as we talked about in year one, uh, first year, those courses are geared towards global histories and politics and education, transformative lens and educational technologies, especially now with COVID and with the pandemic, you know, we have seen a lot of transformations that happen in education. Like we have to use Zoom to teach, know how to do breakout rooms, how to do recording, how to make sure that we know how to share information and then um, collect opinions from the students and from the, from the instructors. So that's a transformative learn lens right there. And then um, we have a course about equity and ethics. So that is particularly geared towards like leadership in education. We have a social justice and transformative learning in global education course. So in this course is very exciting because we have a United Nations debate forum. So we have students who participate representing different countries in terms of equity and social justice issues in education and learn from each other through the coursework. And then in the, in the end of uh, first year, in the summer course, you would take doctoral apprenticeship. So this is definitely one of the most important features of the program, because you will be uh, working closely with a faculty mentor in the summer course, and you have options. So you can choose to co-author an academic paper, co-present or uh, write a conference proposal. You can develop a new course with the help of a faculty mentor, and you can also design a service learning project that would connect with your dissertation 
dissertation research later. So the, there are like multiple options within the course and to, to foster relationship building with a faculty mentor. And a lot of the times these faculty mentors do become dissertation chairs or committee members. So that helps you early on build that relationship. So um, for the second year, as we talked about, you would take writing course, research method courses, and um, there is a EDOS 7004 in spring two that help you connect with your dissertation chair and, and plan for your first three chapters in your dissertation, which is called a prospectus. And then in the summer, you would take a, an, a, compre a comprehensive exam, which is a take home essay. So you take that, uh, you know, uh, at home and then you answer that question and then submit that and then towards the end of that course you would complete your proposal which is the first three chapters defense of your dissertation so that's the plan of the first two years um, for the online program we have a residency of two days but then it can be done via zoom so um, if you live overseas if you're international or even if you're traveling during that time we have the residency um, it's okay we'll make sure that we work with you you know we can use multiple uh, modalities to help you complete that requirement and then the third year like we mentioned before you would complete the dissertation writing um, with the help of your dissertation chair and your committee so that is the overall um, alignment of all the courses in the program. If you have further questions, feel free to ask at Q&A time or write me an email anytime. So that is what we talked about online asynchronous modality of the transformative learning emphasis, which means that you can complete the degree asynchronously. So um, you don't have a definite time you have to come on campus or uh, you know, do Zoom except for the residency and some of the meetings that it's flexible. You can schedule those meetings with your chair and your committee members and um, faculty mentor. Um, so that will be asynchronous online. And we do have another option this year called the Life Virtual. So the Life Virtual is the exact same program, the course requirements and alignment, are exactly the same as the online, except for it's not done asynchronously um, online, but it's done synchronously via Zoom. So synchronous via Zoom is that each week we will meet in a class setting via Zoom. And the class meetings is Monday night, 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. Central Time. So for those students, if you live overseas or out of state, as long as the time difference work for you, you can still choose the live virtual modality if you prefer the face-to-face -face interaction um, via Zoom. Because I know that some students do prefer more flexibility with the online asynchronous, but some people prefer the face-to-face chances to interact with professors and peers via Zoom. And so um, you can also save the commuting time. So this option is also um, possible. It's, it's, it's just that I think with the live virtual and the online, um, it, once you choose a particular modality, we're expecting you to stay on that modality uh, instead of choosing, you know, pick and choosing which course I'm gonna do online or live virtual. Once you choose an online mode, you will be in the online mode. And once you choose a live virtual, virtual, you will be a live virtual. So that would be um, the two modalities that we're offering for this fall. So after talking about modalities, I think we come into the most important um, discussions of the info session, which is like, how do we identify ourselves? You know, how, how would you say the most important features of the EDD would be? So you, I listed some points here. I'll quickly walk through that. And if you have questions, let me know anytime. So our EDD is a well-rounded approach that focuses on practice, theory, and research. So in some of the other doctoral programs, they might have more emphasis on theory or applicational knowledge, but our EDD is a holistic, well-rounded approach um, that you would have theoretical uh, discussion in class, you know, you work on scholarly publications and writing, you will learn how to do research, you would have the research methodology, and you know how to apply the theory and then the research methods in real life educational settings. So also know how to apply these in your practice if you're an educator in the classrooms. So it's a well rounded approach. Um, it has it has this equity centeredness when we're building you know the program so you see a lot of the courses and the, the themes and the topics include transformative leadership uh, social justice issue 
and all of that. So that's an equity centered program. We also have global citizenship. So like you see, we have presentations overseas in our campuses. We also have, um, you know, that uh, United Nations debate forum so that we create a global knowledge construction perspective within our doctoral program. Um, our program is very student centered which means that if you have a questions, you know, you send us email, we will reply. And then when we when, when students need to look for jobs, we'll be happy to help you, um, you know, look for resources where the job postings. Um, we also have a newsletter. We publish the conference presentation dates and deadlines so that you know and you can participate. And so we're very student centered um, in terms of preparing our doctoral students in the program. Um, because we're student centered, we think the most important thing is to create opportunities to network and build relationships within the program. So we always focus on how do we support faculty and students to co present and co author papers and work together, such as that doctoral apprenticeship course. How do we create writing consultancy groups and peer support groups so that you guys, you know, form writing groups to help each other, you know, review each other's writings and then publish articles together. And then so those are the things that we really care about in the program. We also offer other emphasis area like educational leadership, special education, and um, teaching English to speakers of other languages. So if you're interested in other emphasis, let me know and we can work with you about um, more information about those emphasis areas. So this year, our program joined Carnegie Project on Education Doctors. So it's a consortium with um, a lot of the universities that have um, EDD, and then they have conferences, journals, and they socialize together and learn from each other. So this year we join as an Explorer member because it's our first year, and then um, we're trying to, you know, socialize and learn more about well, what, are, what are the best places to publish, what are the best places to, to find jobs for our doctoral candidates. So um, that's the thing that we're doing. And also um, our EDD is very proud to say we're transparent with our policy on a, with a web-based handbook. So we have a Google site website. If you click that, you will see our handbook published. So, so all the policies and, and, and how to get through each milestone in the EDD, you can see that clearly um, written down on the handbook for, you, for your reference. So these are the distinctive features of our program. So um, some of you might be wondering, so upon graduation, what, what, what's my career prospects, right? So for the EDD, it's now the program was designed to fit into your schedule. If you are full-time working professionals, um, you know, if you're busy with your life, this is the program designed for you um, because uh, we have asynchronous online that allows flexibility. We have live virtual that is Monday evening time class meeting. So it was designed to for like um, working professionals and the career paths include university professors, higher education administrators, diversity officers or directors in educational institutions, researchers or administrators in nonprofit organizations, as well as administrators for government agencies. So there is a link right there with our Google site link that says career prospects. Please click that link and find more information um, about these career opportunities upon graduation. So um, some of you may be wondering about our tuition. So um, our program is designed to be 40 credit hours, so $930 per credit. So the total tuition is $37,200 US dollars. And of course, we want to have, a, have an asterisk that to say that actual tuition and duration depend on successful completion of dissertation. So we do design the program to be three years and 40 credits, but in case there are some situations, especially last two years, we have seen students who might have uh, challenges, personal challenges because of the pandemic that might actually delay or slow down the duration and the and overall uh, program. But then um, it's, we, we would hope for the best that our students can complete the program within a three year time timeframe. And so as you see tuition references, in fact, our online EDD is affordable because when compared to other universities that also offer an online EDD, the range of tuition is between 80,000 to 120,000. So um, I would say the website you, uh, EDD, it's, it's an affordable plan and you can also um, seek financial aid packages once you're admitted to the program. So for some of the K-12 educators, um, you can also see that whether your districts would offer a pay bump. So 
uh, we have a, a, an FAQ within our website that has listed some of the nearby school districts that they do offer a paper once you get the doctoral degree. And so you should take a look at that. And then also uh, a lot of the districts offer tuition reimbursement or scholarships. So we have students who have been enjoying having the, those tuition reimbursement and scholarship through their school districts. So um, we have some student testimonials today. So the first one is from Siobhan Curry. She's a doctoral student in educational leadership. Let me find a volunteer. Eskaya, do you mind reading this um, um, testimonial for us? Of course. Um, so my experience in the EDD program has proven to be absolutely powerful. I've been challenged in a plethora of ways this program has caused me to dive deeper into critically thinking about the areas of research that I believe are most impactful. My research is proving to be challenging, yet life-changing. I have a stronger understanding of the ways that I can investigate trauma as it relates to school leadership. Thank you, thank you, Eskaya. So Siobhan is currently an assistant principal at St. Louis Public Schools. So that's her testimonial. We also have Trisette who came by today as invited guest speaker. Tegan, would you be so kind to read her uh, testimonial? Yes, of course. Um, the camaraderie of the cohort and genuine encouragement from each professor and supplementary uh, faculty and staff support has aided me in building the confidence necessary as a doctoral student in the program. It is truly empowering to embrace my transformation over the course of this doctoral program and arrive at the time in which I can proudly call myself an educational researcher. Thank you, Tegan. So that's Trisette's um, testimonial. And again, if you guys are interested in connecting with our doctoral students due to the topic that you're interested in, let me know anytime. So here is the slide with some of the admission requirements. So uh, we require all undergraduate and graduate transcripts of the evidence of a bachelor's degree and a master's degree, um, cumulative GPA of 3.0 for graduate coursework, three letters of recommendation, an application fee of $125 that's waived for alumni, current Rapsa University faculty, staff, and students. And then um, towards the application process after July 1st, I will be scheduling virtual interviews with the applicants as well. You know, because interview process help you know more and you can ask questions and we can also tell you, um, you know, more about our program and then let you see if this program is a good fit for you. So it's an important process. Application deadline is July 1st, 2022 for fall admission. So um, the next slide is about international students. And then, and then I think on the following slides, we'll talk about the GRE waiver. So since Tegan is here, Tegan, do you mind that now I'm gonna pull up the uh, link for the international admission process, and then you can start talking about um, international admission. Yes, of course. Okay, so the application process for international students is exactly the same, except um, we will need you to submit an English proficiency score. So if you scroll all the way down to proof of English proficiency. Um, so our scores for um, that you need to be eligible for admission is um, you need a TOEFL uh, score of 80 or higher and IELTS scores of 60 or 6.0 or higher or a Duolingo score of 110 or higher. We typically recommend our students to take Duolingo since you can complete that online at home for $50 and it's the cheaper option of the two. Uh, and that's what our students have been enjoying um, to take it. Um, if you're from the following countries, you are exempted from an ESL score. So all you have to do is make sure you check the country that you're listed, um, your, where your nationality is from, and then we can waive that for you. We also um, offer waivers for students who have studied in the US at a graduate level for a year um, with, and you have completed your studies within the last three years and we can waiver, um, offer a waiver for the English proficiency score for you as well. Wonderful. So I will stop sharing screen and go back to the presentation. Thank you, Tegan. So 
So thank you, Tegan. So the next is the GRE requirements waiver. So I'm going to read the statement. So um, Webster University's Doctor of Education program has a vision and mission for transforming the status quo of inequities in the educational systems of the world. Advocacy, criticality, and social consciousness are part of our ethos, and we stand by our values. Recently, we have witnessed a nationwide discussion of the use of standardized admission assessments, particularly regarding, regarding GRE. We have made a decision together with our Office of Academic Affairs to waive the GRE requirements for full admissions. Please reach out to the director of EDD, which is me, if you have any further questions. So this year, when you apply, there is no GRE requirements. 